You're watching LoadedTV.com. This is The Wake Up Call, and I'm Ken McKim, your host for Tech Bytes, and this is your Tech Bytes update. So today I'm just going to talk about one thing, and that would be the latest downloadable content in the Mass Effect universe. Now, Mass Effect is a trilogy of games on Xbox and PlayStation, uh, and they frequently come out with these standalone stories called downloadable content or DLC. Well, the newest one for Mass Effect 3 is called Retake Omega. Basically, it's taking a tertiary character from the second game, Mass Effect 2, and kind of fleshing out the story that happens to her between the second and third games. She's basically a gangster. She's part of a race of beings called the Asari. And she ruled this city in space uh, called Omega. Think of it like Cloud City from The Empire Strikes Back, uh, except full of really bad people, smugglers, assassins, all preying on each other and innocent people. So it's kind of a gangster's paradise, if you will. So between the second game and the third game, she loses control of that city. She gets kicked out by a terrorist organization called Cerberus. And they allude to this in the third game, but they don't really fill in any of the details. So now you have the DLC that tells the story of her reclaiming her city. So, of course, she wants you and your character, Commander Shepard, who is the same character that you've had throughout all three games, uh, ask Shepard to come and help her retake the city. Now, if you don't want to know what happens in the Retake Omega DLC, I suggest you stop watching because I'm going to talk about the whole thing. And it's going to be spoilerific. So, stop watching now if you don't want to know. You have been warned. This is the biggest spoiler alert you could possibly have. Okay? Got it? Here we go. I have been a huge fan of DLC and the Mass Effect universe because it has always been done very well. The writing, the graphics, the gameplay, the combat system. It's, I've always been a huge fan. DLC, however, only serves a purpose if it takes you on an emotional ride with characters you care about and then comes to a satisfying conclusion at the end of it. Up to this point, their DLC for the Mass Effect universe has done just that. Now, the gold standard is a game called uh, Lair of the Shadow Broker which is a DLC pack for the second game in the trilogy, Mass Effect 2. It has interesting characters. The story itself is engaging. The combat is good. And the uh, cinematics and the overall graphics are well done. It's an involving experience. It's one that leaves you happy for having done it at the end of it. I wish I could say the same thing about Retake Omega. Alas, I cannot. Where do I even start? Okay. There's only two major characters in this entire thing of any interest to your character, Commander Shepard. That's Arya Talok, who you were helping her retake her city, and then another shadowy figure named Nyrene. Nyrene is of a race of Turians, which are bird-like creatures, and this is the first time we've ever seen a female Turian in all three games, so you'd think they would spend a little time developing her as a character. They don't really. She ends up being the leader of a resistance that has taken root on Omega after the occupation of the Cerberus uh, terrorist organization. And you find out, this is the big twist, by the way. This is the big twist that they keep alluding to throughout all of the teaser information that we read about this DLC up to its release. She was Arya's girlfriend for a while. That's it. I had no idea that that was the big twist. I kept waiting for whatever the big twist was going to be, and then I had to go back and, and read some more stuff online to figure out that that was it that she was involved with Arya and they had a falling out. Really? Okay. Um, exposition in any game is good 
if it's organic. And what I mean by that is if you're allowed to discover information in a way that feels natural and true to the characters uh, around you. Well, that doesn't happen here either. The exposition that gives you the information that you need to know to go forward is extremely heavy-handed and it basically just bleh, here you go. That's all you need. It's it's there's no sense of discovery or uh, a gradual uh, learning of anything useful. It's just kind of that splayed out for you. I so that's not good. So you think, okay, I can overlook exposition that's done badly if everything else is done well. Well, Mass Effect 3 has a lot of problems. I'm not a huge fan of the game, and that's a whole other subject. But one of the problems was never the look of the game. Mass Effect 3 is the best looking, in my opinion, of all three Mass Effect games. It looks gorgeous. This DLC for the most part, does not. And there's a lot of cutscenes, and cutscenes mean uh, cinematics where things are happening on screen that you have no direct control or influence over. It's basically watching a mini-movie inside the game. And these look horrible. They look washed out, they look fuzzy, they look grainy, and not in any kind of good artsy way. They just look like crap. They look cobbled together. It's horrible. So. Bad writing so far, and now subpar graphics. How's the combat system? The combat system is fine. It's the same combat system they used for the rest of Mass Effect 3. However, you would hope to be challenged by a new enemy. You see a lot of the same types of enemies you have through most of Mass Effect 3. They have uh, these new robots, which are upgraded uh, mechs, they call them, short for mechanical. Uh, and so they have better shielding, so you can't quite kill them as fast as you used to, but they fall pretty easy. And my character at this point in the playthrough is fairly weak stats-wise, and she still just blitz through all of them. There's another new Reaper character. Now, the Reapers are the threat coming in from outside the galaxy to enslave and harvest all of humanity and all the other races that live in the galaxy. And there's a new breed of them on... Omega, and they look kind of creepy, but they're pretty lame. Uh, again, dispatched easily, even on the higher difficulty levels, they're no big deal. So there's no tension, there's no suspense at all. So bad graphics, bad bad guys, bad writing, what else could be bad? How about the sound? Really? Yeah, really. There are scenes of crowds that are supposed to be cheering and you can barely hear them making any noise at all. There's a particularly explosive, literally explosive death scene for Arya's former girlfriend, Nyrene. Uh, and I don't recall hearing an explosion, really. I mean, it's a belt of grenades that blows up all the enemies around her and her. And I, I don't even think my controller rumbled. <laughs> so, and that was a horrible way to dispose of her character, too. I mean, just, you've got maybe half an hour left in gameplay to go, and they just kill her off for no reason. You never really learn anything about her. It was crap. So, uh, that's another thing, too. You'll frequently be talking to characters, and they just kind of pop in and out of the scene. Uh, some of them move entirely unnaturally. There's one just technician working on a console and, and she kind of turns her head and she does so just a little bit too far. That was the creepiest thing in the game actually when she turns to look over her shoulder at you and then just keeps going just a little too far to where you know that that's not possible and that's not right and that's not natural and the fact that that was kind of the creepiest thing in the game for me is is bad. It's horrible. And all of this for the bargain price of like 20 bucks, depending on how many Microsoft points you already might have on your account. It's, it's four hours of hodgepodge. The general, the Cerberus general that stole Omega out from underneath Arya's nose, basically, that forced her off, took control over it, 
is so underdeveloped and underwritten. He tries to be the, the noble adversary kind of thing, but again, they don't really delve into that. And he makes such a small impression that I can't remember what he's called. <laughs> I just finished the game a couple of hours ago, and I don't remember his name. Uh, apparently, he's in some of the graphic novels that they've written about the expanded Mass Effect universe. I don't care. And that's the bottom line. At the end of it, you just don't care that you played it. You kind of care that you spent 20 bucks on it. And uh, it really might as well not have happened. And that hurts me because I love the Mass Effect universe as a whole. And I look forward to, to going back and visiting a new ways. And that's what DLC is supposed to, to do for you. And, and this just fails. Fail all over it's not worth your time, it's not worth your money. If you want to experience good DLC, go back to Mass Effect 2 if you own it and replay some of that if you've purchased DLC content for Mass Effect 2. I did, I played all of them, I love all of them. So, so that's it, I'm afraid. Um, better ways to spend your time, maybe you know, go clean the garage, actually do some laundry today, you know, whatever. Just don't waste your time with Retake Omega DLC for Mass Effect 3, because it's not worth it. All right, well, that's going to be it for this edition of Tech Bytes. Thank you for listening to me rant and rave again. Uh, as always, send any of your tech questions to me, ken at loadedtv.com. That's ken, K-E-N, at loadedtv.com. Or look me up on Facebook, and you can message me there. Uh, don't go anywhere, though, because you are watching The Wake Up Call, and there are more great stories just ahead. So stay tuned, and I'll see you later. Take care, everybody.